What's up, y'all? This is Macy J, and this is my exclusive interview. Uh, Macy J is uh, Macy J is like an extension of my myself as a as a whole. So it's not my government, but it is my initials. So um, like the the Macy J persona is just me and like the the most fun parts of me. So the most fun and confident parts of myself. So. Oh well, M Macy J is like um, that's like the actual name. So like that's that's my artist name and that's what I go by. Um, but G Bunny is just like the, the kind of, yeah, like you said, like the moniker. Um, it's kind of like the brand behind Macy right, right. J. Yeah, like um, the Beyonce, Sasha Fierce. Right, exactly, exactly. It's National got Ivy Park, shit like that. So it's like the G Bunny brand is like it's basically like the the fun and ferocious. It's like it's like you you're a gangster, but you also sweet. You know what I mean? So like that's the whole G Bunny idea. Oh yeah, I've always I've always wanted to do music my entire life. I was singing at like three years old, like to like Italian opera and shit. So like I've always been a singer. Then I got into like rock, and I was singing like Evanescence type shit. Um, like Amy Lee is one of my uh, vocal inspir inspirations. Um, and then like as I got older, with I turned to R&B and hip hop, and that like I just got really immersed in the, in the culture and everything and I became a dancer as well and it gave me my confidence so I, I felt like that was why like you know before when I tried to be in rock bands and shit it wasn't clicking with with who I was so I was like I don't think this is for me so I kind of like backed away from it went into music journalism I was um, gonna go into like uh, like complex or double XL stuff like that music and music journalism and shit like that but um Eventually, I just realized, like, no, I need to, I need to be the one that I need to go into music as the artist, not the one interviewing the artist. Like, I would say, well, I'm like, I am definitely, I would consider myself a hip hop singer more than anything. Like, I'm, I don't really consider myself as a pop or R and B singer so much as a hip hop singer. Um, that's because, like, I do, like, like you said, like, I do relay like a lot of pain in my music. I do relay a lot of more so like reflections. Right now, I'm in like reflective mode, like, because I, I made all the mistakes. And now I'm like making the, the leveling up, but now I'm in the leveling up process. So like I'm making music based off of my pain and my trials. And now I've, I'm able to make music about, you know, my future, what I'm, what I'm focuses on, focusing on to manifest for myself. And um, so like music that like, really I, I do have music that, can, that everyone can relate to. Um, it's something a little different than like mainstream, I would say. Um, some of my shit you can hear on the radio. But, but like, I feel like more like, Stuff when people really want to like go deep into their mind and figure themselves out, that's the kind of shit. That's, the, that's what my playlist would be for you. Yeah, um, so you said that you were a stripper, right? Mm -hmm. um, now with uh, people like Cardi B, you know, coming into the mainstream, you know, from the stripper world, you know, then going from you know, being a stripper to love the hip hop yeah. and music. Would you say there's any like Cardi B influence somewhere in there? Like, are you, are oh yeah, I mean, I mean the. The fact that she was able to do it and like, I mean, she wasn't the, I wouldn't say she was like the absolute first or the only, and she's not the only, but um, she definitely is the one that made it clear that if you don't give up and you really just, own yeah, own, exactly, own it. Don't be ashamed of what she was. You just gotta embrace what she was because it taught you how to be who you are now and like how, how to be you better. So like, that's really what it's done for me too is, I never would have got into music if I didn't start dancing because I was in like a couple of different abusive relationships that like really kind of fucked up my confidence. And so like the fact that I was able to still go forward and dance and, and I learned my worth, I learned how to demand my worth. And that's really where the correlation to hip hop becomes. Like that's how you really make money doing the music instead of just letting a label like, you know, run shit for you. I really plan on staying independent as much as possible I would be open to a joint ventures. I eventually, I want to open up my own label, and um, like, like me and my my um, partner, uh, Rugged Disciple, also want to go into business together and open up our own label. And joint venture would be the way to go, not really signed, because I mean, I'm open to contracts to a point. You know, I, I would be open to hearing what they have to say or what their offer would be. But um, I'm I'm lucky to have like you know a couple people that I can go to about like you know legalese and. The, what the contract's really saying and to have them break it down for me right, right. before I really um, make that jump, make that decision to, to go with a, a record deal or something. Nothing to Madness um, is like my baby. Like, I, that's my favorite album. I mean, like, obviously, I only have two albums so, out so far, but I, um, I put a lot of, of myself into this album, a lot of my past and my uh, prospects for my future. And um, 
I like exactly what it says, Method to Madness, like w when you listen to each song, there's a little piece of my, my methodology into making it into the music business and breaking into it and, and maintaining, you know, myself and my spirit without, you know, selling out too far, too, you know, too soon for real, so. Um, but yeah, like Method to Madness is basically like that encouraging album that uh, people can listen to to really hype themselves up and get their focus right and go after their goals. That's really what I wanted to do with that album. And that was actually my first song that I did with um, my producer who he, he actually produced the entire album, Yellow Genix. Um, he produced the whole album, he's from Virginia. And um, he reached out to me on Instagram and just was like, um, hey, do you want to do a track together, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I, I was vibing with the beat for Wings and I was just writing, I was literally sitting in the club and I wrote like, just sitting in an empty club in South Jersey. Yep, and, and that was where the song took me. And, the beat was called Far Away. Okay. So I wrote, I was like, yeah, I can't wait to get far. And like, but, but then it's like, when you run from your past, the whole point of the song is like, you never really get away from it. It catches up to you. So you never get far enough away. So it's like, that's what the song is like referring to. Is like, no matter how successful I get, no matter how far away I get from where I'm from, I, like, I can't run from, you know, what I went through, what, what you know, kind of shit that I got into and, and the kind of things that happened to me because of it. So, you know, it's better to face that shit instead of run from it. Yeah, from the country. I would say it's from the country, not a country girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, two, two different Definitely ways. two different ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting because I, I just have always felt so outcasted where I'm from. Like, I'm not, like, I'm just not country. Like, that's, I'm, I'm just not a country girl. And it's also like, I, I grew up in the country and went to school with a bunch of burb kids. Like they were all from the suburbs and they were all from the developments and all grew up next to each other and all this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, um, like close enough to a scene to each other's houses and shit. So they was all of each other's asses all, you know, like as kids and shit. And I really didn't have that many friends and shit like that. So I was always growing up kind of outcasted where I was from. Um, then when I moved out, I moved out of my parents' house at 17, like, me and my dad butted heads real heavy, so, um, like, yeah, when I was 17, I moved out, um, went through my own kind of, like, drama through college and started dancing, and that's how I kind of, like, I don't know, like, the hood adopted me in a way, like, they, like I really felt myself and I felt most accepted by the hood, and, and that's, like, the best way I can put it is that um, that's definitely um, the only the only thing South Jersey has is Philly right now. Um, unfortunately, like it's like and, and even then you still have to go like up to like New York City really to get some real like some real movement with like underneath your your music. So um, it's rough, but I mean like that's really like a goal of mine is when I do get bigger, I wanna I wanna come back and I wanna make it more accessible for artists down here because there's so much talent. There's like, I've seen so much talent from Bridgeton, um, like Millville area, Vineland, and uh, like. Oh, well, South Jersey, definitely. Uh, you're already gonna hear from him. We got Rugged Disciple over to my right. Um, he's definitely an upcoming artist that everyone's gonna wanna get, like touch base with. He's got a lot of music on that pit. Got a couple of things on Apple Music and all platforms. And um, he's coming out with an album real soon. His uh, visual that he got in the in the cut, in the cut is dope too. So definitely look out for him. Um, other South Jersey artists. I mean, other than you know, Russ Lotto's on to come up as well. Who else we got? Um, Mike Mango, Kevin Eleven. Um, who else we got? South Jersey. Oh damn it! On the spot. Oh, I wish I had prepared something. <laughs> um, so tell us, uh, what makes you think? Oh yeah. Um, Damn it, um, Fire Force Studios too. MCE, Music Crave Entertainment. Check out those guys. Um, Prince of King, check out all them. So um, the one where I leave, they definitely dope too for South Jersey. I wanna be a household name in two. That's the goal, like, that's the goal. I, I really, um, and I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Um, Taking it week by week for now, trying to plan six months ahead and then letting the rest to like kind of like, like kind of surrender into fate at that point. Cause um, like I'm taking it like day by day that way because I, I like to do things my way and, and my process is very precise to, to me. It's personalized to me and 
That's why I don't have like, you know, a whole team yet because I'm waiting for all those pieces to kind of come together for me. Um, if you want real raw music, if you want something from somebody who's been through shit who, and who wants to basically um, begin a dialogue about the shit that I've been through, that I know other women have been through, that I know other people in general have been through, um, check my shit out because it could um, unlock something for yourself too that you didn't know. It's all about self-discovery with Macy J. So. <laughs> Um, I want to shout out E-Tunes, Speak, e Speak Volumes um, in Philadelphia for recording my entire album beautifully and really putting in the work with me and making sure that shit sound like it could go on the radio tomorrow. Um, Yellow Genics out in Virginia Beach, Vo Black out in Virginia Beach. He's definitely an artist to check out. Um, he's, got, he's making waves in Virginia and I was happy to be able to bring him up to Philly so we could do a song together at the top. Um, I want to shout out my man over here, Rugged Disciple. He definitely is about to kill the game. Ain't no one gonna see it coming either, okay? Um, I want to shout out my homie Russ Lotto for, set, for setting all this up and making sure that shit always, you know, running smoothly and we going with the flow, you know what I mean? So, always laid back vibes when we working together. And, um, yeah, that's it. Well, this has been Macy J's, you know, first exclusive interview. You know, please expect her back sometime in the near future. <laughs> Macy, we want to thank you for coming out here today. Thank uh, you for no problem. Me. All right.